Have you ever wondered what's in the fish you're eating? I have. So I began research on fish and toxins. After reading a book by Dr. Jane Hightower, I decided to focus on methylmercury, and I found a historical significance in how our governmental agencies have determined what is safe for us to consume. I hope that you find this informative. For the general population, human exposure to mercury is predominantly the result of dietary intake and fish and other seafood products are the main source of methylmercury. Concentrations can be 1,000 to 10,000 times greater than any other food. So how do you know what is safe to eat? Advisories are made available to help the consumer make healthier choices, but they are confusing and conflicting as they are published by various interest groups and branches of the government. For example, the EPA and FDA have established different standards for what is safe to consume. Currently, the FDA has an action level of one part per million as the maximum concentration that may be found in fish tissue that is commercially sold. The EPA is responsible for monitoring recreationally caught fish from local waters in a set of risk assessment criterion based on a reference dose, which we'll discuss later. This leads to a useful comparison value of 0.5 part per million, one half of the FDA's acceptable standard. The EPA's more conservative value continues to be observed by many U.S. states and other countries for health and safety reasons. Let's look at how both of these standards for exposure risk were determined. Beginning in 1932, the Chizo Corporation dumped chemical production and development waste into Minamata Bay, contaminating the fish. By 1968, it is estimated 27 tons of mercury compounds have been dumped. In 1956, the villagers, dependent upon a diet of fish, had accumulated a level of methylmercury to create a mass poisoning. As of 2001, thousands of victims have been identified that either died, were born with severe disabilities, and suffering a range of neurological problems. This tragedy is when our knowledge of methylmercury poisoning began. In order to determine whether a person might have an elevated methylmercury exposure level, a blood mercury test is the most common way to determine this. However, a hair mercury test can also be used. And again, the FDA and EPA have a wide discrepancy of what is deemed acceptable. The EPA revealed that over 600,000 children born each year are at risk of lowered intelligence and learning problems as a result of unsafe methylmercury exposure in the womb, and also found that almost 16% of women of childbearing age in the U.S. had high methylmercury concentrations. In 2004, the EPA and FDA published an advisory for women who might become pregnant, women who are pregnant, nursing mothers, and young children. In this advisory, the FDA recommends up to 12 ounces per week from a variety of seafood lower in mercury. However, it is also stated that up to 6 ounces or one average meal of albacore tuna may be consumed as part of this. 
Canned tuna is one of the most highly consumed commercial fish products of which albacore accounts for about one-third. It is convenient, affordable, a good source of protein, and provides a source of omega-3 fatty acids. And as one of the top 10 species of seafood consumed in the U.S., it has the highest methylmercury concentration. The FDA does not take into account other populations that are high consumers of fish, such as ethnic groups, islands and coastal communities, and others that choose high seafood diets. Current policy allows fish that have concentrations greater than one part per million to be sold without penalty which can be interpreted by the public to mean mercury is not a concern. The fishing and food industries have powerful lobby groups to mitigate FDA action and to continue to promote fish consumption, even to populations at risk. In canned tuna, one of the top revenue producing items per unit of shelf space will never display any warning signs or labels under the current FDA policy. But seafood can be a healthy component of a balanced diet, and the FDA could be helping the public make low mercury choices rather than justifying that the benefits outweigh the health risks. An alternative to canned tuna can be found in seafood products shown here. Also convenient, affordable, a good source of protein, higher in the beneficial omega-3 fatty acids than tuna. Mmm, -hmm. really good. Cool. Oh, they're headless. That's good. It's delicious. It's delicious. Wow. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my first anchovy. Salty? <laughs> Another example might be substituting salmon for tuna sushi if you include this in your diet on a regular basis. This consumer appears to be making a wise choice. And the devil with the rest. <laughs> Yo, ho, ho, when a bottle of rum. With me, Bon appetit. Yo, ho, ho, when a bottle of rum. We burn and we pillage. Oh, my, my, my. When a bottle of rum. Our heart. Take what we want, we will. We sail the seas by a skeleton flags. Yo, ho, ho, when a bottle of rum. Scary and we're hairy and our clothes are rags. Yo ho ho, when a bottle of rum. We search the seas for silver and gold. Yo ho ho, when a bottle of rum. We don't have a bedtime because we're too darn old. Yo ho ho, when a bottle of rum. To view this video in its entirety, please visit www.vimeo.com and search for methylmercury in fish, what the label won't tell you, or Google my name, Wendy Isasi, and the video link will appear. Thank you. <laughs>